Well, Jim, one thing I did send you earlier this week, because I started receiving it from a lot of the listeners, is apparently recently on one of his website's shows, I guess they're podcasts, Dave Meltzer was talking about AEW's booking problems, is the way I'll put it. Things that we've been talking about, but all of a sudden Dave is at the point now where he has to address certain things and what he thinks the problems are. Did you have a chance to check that out? I did. I listened. Uh, it was, it was very lengthy. He used a lot of words, but many of them, the same word over and over again, but nevertheless, isn't it kind of like the downfall of every civilization, the, 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 uh, the press secretary or the official statements, they have to start acknowledging what the people are out in the streets protesting about they finally have to start acknowledging it that's the beginning of the end dave Meltzer has had to acknowledge what everybody else has been looking at with their own eyeballs for the past however long that this show's been on the air that is not not necessarily wrong with the show but it doesn't make sense about the show that doesn't that the reason the show is not growing that the reason that people are are starting to find chinks in the armor, it's it's stuff that we talked about this a few weeks ago on one of the programs that a lot of this has had to do with smoking the hopium and people wanting desperately something to be true. They've wanted uh, an alternative wrestling promotion to Vince McMahon, and haven't we all? We all have in one form or another, but most of the wrestling fans that liked wrestling by now, as we've seen by the numbers, have gone on to do something else because wrestling doesn't look like wrestling anymore. And the people who still like the concept of wrestling, whatever it is in their mind, have been so desperate for something else besides Vince that this had to be it. They had convinced themselves it was going to be it, and especially the worst, the worst people, the the people most into this, most willing to drink the Kool Aid, most willing to give anything a pass because it's a different promotion. Because their favorite wrestlers were the Cucamonga Kids and Twinkle Toes, so it was going to have to be good. They're going to show the world. They're going to shock the world. And it's been a year and a half, and the the big explosion, no pun intended, was a popcorn fart. The exploding ring match was a metaphor for, you know, AEW. It wasn't what they thought it was going to be, and they so desperately wanted it to be that they were seeing it until it started getting worse. Because now, folks, if you haven't noticed, this is the downhill slide beginning of the shelf life of an amateur booker. Because think about this, and I know he things always change, and you don't always get the talent you want, and COVID happens. But a guy that's going to start a wrestling company and book it, he's got a bunch of, just like a band that's going to, fucking sign with a, a record label and put out an album the first album's the easiest because they've already got songs written and then if they're any good they got to follow those up and the albums get harder they had all those songs saved up when nobody wanted to hear their fucking songs they were all in their head they were all on paper they just couldn't do them now they can do them brian you know where i'm going with it with the music business and then all of a sudden the pressure is, oh shit, what do I do now? The shit we saw the first year of AEW was was Tony Khan's good shit. That's what he had saved up. That's what he was thinking about all that time he wanted to start a wrestling company. Now he's run out of shit. It's just week to week and it's falling apart fast. Every booker has a shelf life. I was burnt in OVW after five years, I was burnt in Smoky Mountain after four years. And I did a lot more shows. And they were all better than Tony Khan. 
because we were doing weekly television and house shows, blah, blah, blah. Dusty got burnt. Jerry Jared would switch off. Lawler would just get uninterested. Every booker, you because you you run out of you just run out of enthusiasm for thinking of things, and you have to take a break and stop constantly thinking about things so then you can start thinking about things when you're not trying. It's like trying to take a shit when you don't have to. Brian, go take a shit right now. So uh, anyway, Dave Meltzer now, of all people, even though he did it very nicely and very diplomatically, and it, as never I said, said Tony Khan. I mean, that's never the thing. mentioned the name of the guy he was talking about that was doing the booking that had the problems. Never mentioned Tony Khan's name, but just said, "Yeah, AEW has some problems with their booking." But I noted a couple, and I want I will see what you think of them. He's uh, he said one of their problems is they have too much talent all at once. And because a lot of people are complaining, what, they had 60 or 70-something different human beings exposed in some fashion, in, out of the ring, whatever, promo on their most recent television program, but they don't have too much talent. They don't have enough talent. They have too many people on the roster. And... All this talk for a year and a half, well, we have so much talent, so it's hard to get everybody TV time and get everybody up. Well, that's your fault, dumb shit. Number one, as I said, you don't have too much talent. You got too many people. Number two, the reason why you don't concentrate on every jack leg on your roster is because then whenever it's like the same thing that Shitstain did wrong. It made all the underneath guys happy as schoolgirls with shiny new vibrators to get talk or be on TV. And it also not only uses up your time, but your thought processes and your resources. Because everybody shouldn't be involved in something. Because if everybody's involved in something, everything's the same. Involve your top people in things and let your middle and bottom people sometimes just wrestle. Sometimes they win. Sometimes more, more often they lose. Every once in a while, you might hear a comment or two. But they're not being pushed right now. They're not in a position to be pushed, and they don't need to be pushed. Concentrate on your top guys. Have them on every week, working and talking, and in VTRs, and in goddamn videos, and whatever else. Sprinkle the other guys in around to fill in the cracks. Don't have 70 people on your television program. But it's the booker's fault because he assembles that crew. A booker has to not only know and recognize talent, but know which talents to interact those talents with. And how not to have 70 people on TV so nobody gets over, and everybody's sitting around. And you don't just use the same guy for a fucking year. You ro you use your top guys for a year. You rotate your underneath guys every so often. Uncle Dave says, the heavy use of blood is running off women. I guess women are bigger pussies these days than they used to be. Is that a pun? Why does Dave think that women are so faint-hearted? I think what's running the women off is women are less tolerant of stupidity and silliness in general. And the fact is, is that there are no men on that program that any woman would be attracted to for any reason. A few of them may look good until you realize that all they do when they get home is play video games. They don't want to fucking find the little man in the boat. They want to find their fucking joystick. It didn't happen in the 80s or the 70s or anywhere else. D Dusty Rhodes had some of the bloodiest cards on record even for the nwa in the 1980s and the crowd was 50 percent or more female because they wanted to fuck every single one of the baby faces and most of the heels and in some cases they did they were men real adult men fighting which sometimes women i've been told find fascinating and my market research from female fans that I 
have known over my life that enjoyed wrestling and I still keep in touch with basically say, yeah, these guys are a bunch of fucking pussies. So I don't think the blood is running the women off because it hadn't happened anywhere else in any other territory in, in history. I think it's a silly program that's stupid and doesn't make any sense. And it's running men and women off. And also the fact that there are no men on that roster that the, there are more attractive women to men fans than there are attractive men to women fans on that program. And I'm not talking about the way they look. I'm talking about the way they act. Um, there was mention at, oh, well, they need that second show on TNT to spread the talent out. Did you hear that, Brian? I believe so. If the first show isn't any good, why is the second one going to be any good? If the first show can't get anybody over, why is the second one good? When you go into a restaurant and you order a meal and it comes out and it tastes like dog shit, do you say, I want my money back and go somewhere else? Or do you say, you know, this tastes like goddamn dog food. I'd rather have something else. And they bring you some cat food. <sighs> Dave was giving ideas of what AEW could do as a promotion. They could do this or they could do that or they could do. Yes, they could. They could certainly do that if they knew how. If their booker knew how, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass on the ground. But the talent don't know how to do it, and they have no guidance because they've been petted on and made over and told that they're fabulous and they have creative freedom and they can do whatever they want, and nobody has pointed out except me their shortcomings in the way that they're presented and the way they work that now everybody else is starting to pick up on a year and a half later. Um, imagine this, Brian. He said, there's too many seconds and managers, too much interference and too many groups exchanging members. <laughs> you should keep your featured talent on the air as TV regulars and don't shoot angles and then just drop the angles. This is Dave's advice. That's basically what we've been saying for forever. What? I'm not even taking fucking credit. Like, I had some epiphany. Well, this is what you should do. Everybody that's ever been around a wrestling business knows that's what you should do. And they've been saying it. Except for the people who wanted this to be fantastic and refused to acknowledge it when it wasn't. And, and this... Uh, Uncle Dave thinks that the Thunderdome set... And the better looking show and the better looking, you know, the atmosphere, the higher budget is what saved Raw from losing to AEW in the ratings during the pandemic. Now, this is where we go back to weed being legal in California. What if a better looking set doesn't mean, as we've seen in wrestling, for years, the better looking set or the better looking TV show doesn't make people watch that show if they don't want to fucking watch it. Now they do get a a um a sense of the number one promotion by having the names and seeing the flash and the glitz and blah blah blah. But that Vince upgraded the production in the 80s during his expansion and created the thought that he was the number one promotion because he had all the fucking talent too. And in the 90s, the way he won the war was not with all the goddamn bells and whistles they put on Raw, but with having the better talent. And so he thinks that somehow this uh, annoying look at... Do, do you know anybody that likes, besides the people that that's picture may be on the fucking thing? likes that Thunderdome and thinks that's easy on the eyes to watch and that's what would have saved Raw from losing to AEW in the fucking ratings. I just know I don't like it, but I guess it maybe looks better than having an empty room with no one there. Well, it, But it's still a bit it, much, I it's, think. It's still a bit much, and they didn't have to have no one there either. They're the ones that didn't do AEW, at least did that. 
they put some people out there to make some noise, even if they were fucking paid fans that they had to fucking test and blah, 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 whatever the fuck. Anyway, I don't think the better looking set means the ratings. I think the better looking talent means the ratings. But weed's legal in California. I'm in love with Mary Jane. She's my main thing. She makes me feel all right. She makes my heart sing. And when I'm feeling low, it comes as no surprise. Turns me on with her love. Takes me to paradise. Do you love me, Mary Jane? Oh, 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 do you, do you, do you, do you, do you? I'm in love with Mary Jane. I'm not the only one. If Mary want to play around, I'll let her have her fun. She's not the kind of girl that you can just tie down. She likes to spread her love and turn your head around. Uncle Dave. Let me say something I was going to say before that rather unfortunate musical interlude. Unfortunate. Your singing is quite unique. I must say. I, it's a bird in this world. But That's what my Aunt Lola used to say. You are a bird in this world. Go ahead. Dave jumped on me on Twitter, whatever it was, a couple months ago. We talked about it on the show because I said, I understand why people like these matches. However, you have to be nuts to watch this show and think the booking and formatting is acceptable. Because it isn't. And he... You know, had to jump in there. I didn't tag him in it, and we went back and forth a little bit on it. But that's been my point all along. You know, Booker of the Year is ridiculous. Promoter of the Year, you've argued. I actually think Matchmaker of the Year. He knows how to put on pay-per-view matches that will get over 100,000 buys, but there's nothing on the TV show, week by week, that does anything to help any of those matches other than announcing one of them. But, you know, I do, I'm i sorry, I can't go with he knows how to put on pay-per-view matches that people will buy because the, the fanatical core audience, and, and it's great, every company has had a fanatical core audience of varying sizes. It's great to have one. But the fanatical core audience of AEW, because of their dedication to proving themselves right and everyone wrong, 100, 125, 150,000 of those people will buy. Literally, if they just all squatted and took a shit in the ring, they would buy it. It started with the crowdfund, the most successful crowdfunding event in all of wrestling that started this whole thing. They got 10,000 people to go to the fucking, where was the Sears Center in Chicago? It was crowdfunding. Those people wanted the promotion to happen and willed it and they refuse to now say ah shit look what they've fucking done this was supposed to be great they see it as great and and some of them to some of them it is great because people that age it's been a while since they've they've seen wrestling presented properly they don't know anything else they don't get it they don't understand why anyone would have ever taken this seriously. It's all supposed to be a joke to them because that's what they've seen over the last few years. That's what it's been. So they don't understand. They think, wow, they're doing a good job. This is what wrestling is. All those tables and thumbtacks. Wow. Uh, but for people who actually liked this, when it was still somewhat a respectable activity, they're fucking offended by this stupidness. And, and so I can, I can see where the, the newest fan and the core fan and the, and people who like Japanese anime would get into this as a quirk because of Twinkle Toes' fetishes or whatever. Um, it's a whole different crowd and they're going to accept that. But for wrestling fans and, or any large amount of people, they look at the show and go, well, this is just fucking stupid. And and I don't see how you can be a level even even if you're not a person who ever liked or watched wrestling if you just tried to watch this you wouldn't understand it because it doesn't make sense from week to week. There's no focus. That's the thing. Like Dave keeps pointing to the women thing. And there's a legitimate thing there because that's the one the reason Dave is pointing to that is because it's provable based on the ratings. That's the one rating, the one demo that has dropped completely off for AEW. 
are women. Now, again, it's a small audience that they use to generate this giant rating. It's well, yes, it's a math. sample and statistical, and they extrapolate. But here's the: th- I still say women have a uh, less tolerance for stupid and foolishness and also women don't have to spend any time whatsoever trying to get laid but the guys do so the, but i don't even think that's the issue again everyone's focusing now on the, the women g- thing the but guys the- are I mean, you can look at the look at the live events when they still had crowds women don't want to see this shit anymore because it's stupid and fake and none of the guys will fuck them so it's a bunch of fucking guys. What I was going that, to say all right. was that the women issue to me isn't the biggest issue. The biggest issue still comes back to the formatting and booking of that show. There's no focus. They have yeah. so many guys on there. Nothing makes any sense. Segment by segment is put together horribly. The same exact thing will happen on the same episode a few segments apart. And, you know, when you really start to think about it, and a lot more in the last few weeks... And Dave, in his own way, kind of opened the door towards a lot more of the criticism being valid and out there. But people are now pointing out all these things, all the QT Marshall chasing the bunny, and then all of a sudden, here's my wife, Cody Rhodes. What has Cody done since Brody Lee? He was out there when Sting debuted. I had to be reminded of that. I don't even remember. He disappeared. What was that? Why was Cody involved with that? The whole buildup to the Shaq thing did nothing. And they seemingly got no benefit of Shaq after the fact, just like they got no benefit of Mike Tyson the first time after the fact. And at least week one this week, they didn't get any benefit in the ratings for that. The show just is really poorly put together. None of the booking makes any sense. I think if they did those pay-per-views and whatever matches they have planned out, those are the matches. And instead of the TV show with traditional wrestling booking by Tony Khan or his version of it, which is a joke, if they just did those road to specials where you talk about, you have a narrator saying, this man hates this person because of this and this happened. And you just have them sit down and do interviews. I think you'd get the same exact buy rate. You I would. don't think they're getting any extra people to buy the show by the pay-per-views based off dynamite. Cause it's a bad show. People are waking up to it now and saying it. It's a really badly put together show. And as far as promoter of the year or booker of the year or whatever, promoters and bookers, you've got to know your product. You also have to have timing and know when to pull the trigger on something. I just leave you with this. Vince McMahon paid Mike Tyson $2 million and turned the the tide of the wrestling war and got Steve Austin over as the biggest box office attraction in wrestling. AEW brings Mike Tyson in. He goes to sleep at ringside holding the belt on the first show. And the second show, he's on. They lose in the ratings to NXT. I, timing and presentation means a lot. But, you know, again, if you're going to criticize AEW, and right now they need to hear it. And if they're getting it from their biggest supporters and people who have traditionally not seen, said bad things about AEW, then it's important. And you would think AEW would listen. But if you're going to say it and you're going to point out the problems with the show, say who's the cause of the problems. Just say Tony Khan. You, you don't have to admit he's in over his head. You don't have to say he's not good at it. But you could say whose fault it is that the show's formatted and booked the way it's been the last several weeks. It's Tony Khan. Wait a minute. The last set, don't put the qualifier of the last several weeks on it. If you want to blame somebody for the way the show has been booked and but formatted. But if your argument, I know, I agree with you. But if your argument is that. The big problem is the loss of female viewers, specifically since the Britt Baker Thunder Rosa match. If that is your argument, and my argument would be there's been bigger problems with that show for a very long time, and now more people are noticing it. But if your argument is it's a female problem since that specific match, then you need to point out who it is who actually has been putting the shows together since that match. And it's Tony Khan. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's in over his head. They have two different shows on YouTube which apparently have like 14 matches at times on each show. They have so many people there. There's no focus on anything. There's no main focus throughout the show. Man, something big happened in Smoky Mountain or Mid-South, and I hate to go back to those, but Mid-South Wrestling did things right. Something big happens, they bring it up throughout the show, they go back to another recap of it, another clip. And this show is just something happens in a segment. Let's go to the next segment. Something else happened here. Let's go to the next one. No one does a promo without being interrupted. No one. I said it this week on the show. You can't can't grieve forever now. Somebody gets fucking 
decapitated by an 18-wheeler. Let's go to the break and come back with those wonderful battling midgets. As soon as the first promo came on the screen, I said, I'll bet that someone's going to come into this promo. I bet it happens every single promo on the show. Every promo. Someone's talking, they get five words out, someone else's music hits, or someone attacks them. Well, let's not spoil the uh, review later on in the program. But anyway, that was... uh, Booker of the year. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, A sad indictment uh, of wrestling and wrestling bookers in 2021. If someone who has no idea how to put together a show is booker of the year. He has no idea. And he thinks he does. That's the thing that should scare people. He believes he's got this. He believes this is in his wheelhouse and he's good at it. And there are people in that company afraid to say anything, and you don't understand why. They're getting a lot of money to, you know, cheer at ringside or whatever the fuck to do. When I don't not on know TV. how that some people can muffle their fucking screams of anguish, though. I don't know how somebody hasn't just cracked up and said, What the fuck are you doing? They grab a white claw and they shut the fuck up. They sit down. That's what they do. They collect their money and they go for the ride. A lot of people see this, the good and the bad, and say, Hey, This is better than life in WWE. At least I'm happy. I may be dealing with a fool, but I'm happy. I'm not stressed and angry. I don't want to choke Triple H. I'm okay. He's a fool, but he's my fool. And he lets me do all the stupid shit I've always wanted to do. And I work two days every two weeks. I'm loving in Florida on the beach in Jacksonville. I'm loving life. That's you ever problem. been to Jacksonville, Florida? I've driven through it. I've never stopped in it. It's it's not exactly fucking Honolulu. Honolulu. Anyway. Honolulu, by the way. Honolulu is much better. No, I'm saying even that, you know, you go to Maui, you go to Kauai. You don't want to stay in Waikiki. It's not. Well, I'm just saying. Anywhere in Hawaii. How did we get started on this Hawaiian, Brian? Anyway, Uncle Dave, thank you for your comments. There you go. Why'd you rip that? Just so I wouldn't think about it again. 